Hello, my name is Cal Moloney from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today, I'm here at the Compass once more to spread the message of freedom. And before I begin, I'd like to address some of the questions I've been receiving about how to spread anarchy in your own community. And the first thing I'd like to address is that, you know, this, this isn't for everyone. <laughs> Uh, this isn't for the timid, of course, this isn't for, I mean, it's just for everyone, of course, but you have to understand that you're, you're going to need, you know, that you know, splice of courage to actually go out there and, and stand, stand up for yourself, to stand up against this tyranny, to stand up for your community. And you're going to meet a lot of people who disagree with that. You're going to meet a lot of people who, I'm not just the psychopaths, but uh, not only criticize and try to put you down, but uh, try to, I guess, emotionally hurt you or, you know, in, in, in whatever capacity way that they can. But you also have to remember that uh, not to give these kinds of strangers that power over your emotions. Uh, not to give these strangers that kind of um, access to, to you, to your life, to, to, to who you are. Uh, you know, that's the sort of stuff you, you grant to, to your friends. People have earned that respect. People have earned that, uh, that love and that friendship. Uh, not to strangers. So, you know, dismiss that, ignore that. Uh, you know, you're not out there to convince everyone. You know, the most you can do is just to talk about it and to, to encourage that dialogue, to encourage, to encourage the, the discussion, uh, to just plant the seeds of freedom. And, you know, so that's, uh, that's pretty much what you need to understand about doing about a lot of all this. You know, um, I've, uh, I guess, the only people who, who've been kind of adamantly hardcore against this here in Richmond have been mostly the local communists. Um, not that I want to bash communism that in and of itself, you know, as long as it's voluntary, sure, go for it. But I've yet to meet a communist that uh, doesn't take a psychopathic stance and wanting to violently force their ideas and preferences onto me. And so, you know, until that moment comes, you know, I'll, I'll have a better look and outcome of that position. But that's pretty much the kind of challenges you're going to face in your own community. You know, if there's ways to reconcile that, if there's ways to kind of uh, meet together and understand that the end game is freedom, sure, right? As long as we're not advocating violence, anything goes. But with that, just uh, keep in mind, stay strong, um, keep keep going, and uh, I guess I'll wrap this up with uh, my favorite quote by Frederick Dulles, and that um, I prefer to be true to myself, even at the hazard of incurring the ridicule of others, rather than to be false and to incur my own abhorrence. So I'll see you guys at the victory party. Share and subscribe if you can, and take good care. Yeah, so that's the hidden violence behind this matrix, behind government, that this organization only knows how to solve problems for one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of non violent solutions that you and I already share. What are your thoughts on that? I'm all right with what you're putting down. Yeah? Yeah. All right, cool, cool. Um, all right, so this moral stance that you and I already share against using violence to solve problems, that's called anarchy. Like in science, anions and cations, and means without. Anarchy oh, oh, means science. So yeah. if we're gonna start throwing that around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, like uh, even etymology in the word anarchy, right? So an anions and cations, and means without. Archy means rulers, right? Monarchy means one political ruler. Anarchy means without political rulers, right? So then you look, but uh, it doesn't mean without rules. But you look what government has then objectively. They have a monopoly on services that everybody wants. Government has a monopoly on law. They don't allow a polycentric legal system. They have a monopoly on security, on courts, on roads, on schools, on currency, on first class mail. You don't have the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe, or even have the freedom to compete against, against those monopolized services and, and, and provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to, to the consumers. Right? Yeah! Right. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! So, uh, at, at point, I'm a free market anarchist. Um, and that's uh, part of an organization called Liberty RVA. It's a non-political organization, of course, and just trying to unite our community. You know, they're trying to use a real voice. It's not a piece of paper. It's not a chat. It's not a lever. Uh, and they're afraid if we actually use a real voice, we realize we serve these fundamental values against violence together. And if we continue heading in that direction, and we'd realize we never needed a government to begin with. Right. So what are your thoughts on? I that? like this guy. This guy's <laughs> pretty alright. <laughs> so what do you think you were gonna uh, enter here? Or? What am I personally gonna yeah, do? Yeah. No, I'm no, no what, what was your preconceptions of uh like what how this was yeah, gonna yeah, go? Yeah, to? yeah, yeah. Uh whew. I wasn't sure. The the armband. Yeah, right. <laughs> well I, I I can't I have to um, I have to show that I'm not afraid, right? I have to stand up for what's right, I have to stand up. I guess for me it's like my little philosophy armband. Um, philosophy armband. Yeah, yeah. I'm not in the closet, um, I'm not afraid to talk about it, and it's kind of important to talk and philosophize about these particular issues, especially when it concerns, uh, you know, complex problems that we know can't be solved by this. Yeah? Yeah. Alright, cool, yeah. cool. Well, I've got yeah, all right, man. <laughs> my name is Cal. Hey, Cal. Kevin. Kevin, pleasure yes. to meet you, Kevin. Very cool chance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got pamphlets if you like. 
further illuminate a sure. lot of Sure, because yeah, yeah. I don't get enough pamphlets around this place. <laughs> <laughs> but these are unlike any pamphlets you've ever come across. That is though. probably true, because those, those guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, even with voting, uh, even definitionally, this means that you're advocating for, for someone to violently force your preferences onto everyone in a geographic region. And it's possibly not even my dude. Right, yeah. That's right. So, I'm and, and, stuck with everybody else's opinions. Like, <laughs> what's that? People are kind of dumb. Yeah, usually. yeah. And, and that's it. So, the majority preference onto the minority, mm. right? And that's, it becomes political warfare no at good. that. No good. Yeah. So, in a free and voluntary society, in a, in a state of anarchy, you have diverse communities of preferences. You can have an apartment complex, 420 friendly, great and awesome. One across the street, that's not perfectly fine. You have different rules for those different establishments for, for the different properties. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just like the fact that someone's taking on the postal service. Right. Like, yeah, the postal service sucks. Thank you. I, I, I did a video recently on the, uh, the USPS, on the monopoly they have on first class mail. Uh, there's a guy a hundred years ago named Lysander Spooner, American individualist anarchist. He, he challenged it because in the Constitution it says they can establish a post system, but it doesn't say they have the exclusive right. Right, so this guy's like, all right, there's this loophole. So he created his own business, much to the government's dismay, and he called it the American Letter Mail Company. And because the cost of stamps back then was $3.50, he was like, oh, fuck that. So he created his own business, out-competed them, did it cheaper, effectively, efficiently. His business was growing. And then the government's like, whoa, what the hell are you doing? They're trying to compete, but they can't. And then so they eventually they just threw a lot of uh, legal challenges against him. He won several of them, but then they forced him out of, out of business through legal debt. And then the Congress just passed a law. So, okay, let's not have that again. We're going to pass a law that says no one is allowed to compete against the USPS. Thanks, government. Right. You're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And that's why there's $60 billion in debt. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And why stamps keep going up every <laughs> right. six weeks. So, yeah. So, what are your thoughts on the cost uh, on the rise of stamps? Well, to be fair, I like most people I use email and right. stuff. So <laughs> so it's I not don't like really you have much of a choice on that matter. True. It's not true. like you can uh, like USPS and FedEx can, they can only deliver packages. That's right. Right? That's they can't deliver pieces bummer, of paper. Which is weird. Right? Aren't they all packages at some point? Right. It's yeah, just you're, a really you're, small you're just, package. You're objecting you're just delivering property. Yeah. You're just delivering objects. It's just a, a piece of paper package. Right. That's yeah. it. That's it. Like so, I could totally stuff a paper in a regular package and what's voila, wrong with that? <laughs> suddenly I don't need you post service. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, and that's and that's what I want, a free market competition for these monopoly services that I can choose, right? Or even have the freedom now to compete and provide a better service, yeah. right? So, yeah! yeah. <laughs> oh man, this is probably like the best meal I've ever had out here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I do what I can. I think it's kind of important. Um, well, it's just, just to talk about it, right? It's true. It's true. And that's, that's the most I, I can do. On camera. On camera, yeah. Well, yeah. So I, I record these discussions, have a lot of video discussions, and uh, like a lot of people go like, well, uh, I mean, they accept the immorality of the state and the inherent violence of it. It's like, well, uh, I'm, I'm, I understand I'm a more agent and so are you, but I don't know about everyone else. It's like, all right, well, here's like uh, 100 people on YouTube that also agree that violence is wrong, it's moral, they don't use it in their life. You know, there's, there's a lot of people more than you think in Richmond that we're kind of ready. In Richmond, what? Yeah, what? Here Who in the city? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never yeah. would have guessed. Never would have guessed. Based off of the polling. Right. <laughs> So that's, that's it, you know, the government just wants to say again, your voice is a piece of paper, a chat, it's a lever. They're afraid if you actually use a real voice. Dollars, really. Yeah. 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 Fundraise. Yeah. Fundraise. That's yeah. Nice. That's it. And uh, voting, look, if, 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 you know, there's there's no evidence, no no historical uh, example how voting was ever allowed to grant your freedom. You know, never. Uh, I mean, you, maybe people will say, well, it's, it's lower some violence. Look, either you're, you're a tax slave or you're not. Sure. Right? You either have freedom or you don't. Either it's consensual or it's not. And government's nothing but it, it, it's, it's a non-consensual relationship you have with it. You never consented. You never agreed. You didn't sign a social contract. Uh, you never uh, gave power of attorney to the generations before you when they forced social security onto you. Right? So that's, that's non-consensual. I mean, that would be considered immoral if someone signed a contract on your behalf without your permission. Also, probably illegal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think you could technically do that. You can't, yeah. Then the lawyers come in and... Right. And that's and that's what government does best. Uh, of course, they're making up all the rules so they can uh, yeah. you know, define it in whatever way they can. You're not allowed to steal. We're just going to call it taxes. You're not allowed to murder. We'll call it uh, organized war. All right. Uh, they call the incident in Boston a terrorist attack, but when Obama is drone bombing children overseas, they just call that oh, collateral damage. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Yeah, it's not it's America. Cool. Yeah, yeah. It's not America. 
<laughs> Freedom worldwide, y'all. Yeah. yeah, bombing democracy, you know, coming to a village near you. Eventually, if you get rid of enough people, you can just take over the land and voila. Yeah. It's fixed. Fixed, yeah. yeah. Done. Democracy. Oh. <laughs> it's a beautiful system. Beautiful system. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and that's, and that's it. Just, um, I want to turn to my community. Let's unite it as a community. And we actually use a real voice. We realize that we share these fundamental values. And if we continue to discuss how to solve these problems in a non-violent manner, in the same way we, we run our own lives, we realize that we never needed a government to begin. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no rules. Well, well, we have rules. Yeah, no rulers. Yeah. Uh, uh. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. I got to go, but of course, of Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Take good care. So that's the hidden values behind this matrix, behind government. This organization only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus a plurality of non-violent solutions that you and I already share. So what are your thoughts on that? I don't know, it's a different way of looking at it. I think uh, the government's really flawed in a lot of ways, but it's hard to make up for it. Um, it's like, our government's a lot better than some people's governments, but it's not perfect, definitely. But what is, what, what would you want to do? What, 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 what I want, okay. Uh, well, I would like to first look at, uh, I look at the more tradition we already share. Let's start off with first principles. In our day to life, we don't use violence to solve problems. You know, that more tradition, that's called anarchy. Like in science, anions and cations, and means without, archy means rulers. Like monarchy, one political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers. Doesn't mean without rules. But would you look at government, what they have objectively then, they have a monopoly on the services we want. They have a monopoly on law. They have a monopoly on courts, on judges, on security, on currency, roads, first class mail. And you don't have the freedom to compete. You don't have the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe. Uh, you don't have the freedom to provide a better service that's not gonna be abusive and harmful to you, the consumer. Right? I still want security, I still want this stuff, but I want it in the way I can choose who's gonna provide it for me. Right? And in a way you would in a free market for any other source that you, you, you pretty much invest your money in, right? But like, you can't do that with the government. They're like, well, tough luck. You have to pay for it and uh, you, you have to accept it. Like social security, you never get consent for that, right? But still, they, they take that from your paycheck and you'll never even have that in your lifetime, right? Uh, so, that, so the solution is uh, just turn to our community. That's pretty much what I'm advocating for. I'm part of an organization called Liberate RVA. It's a non-political organization. This pretty much lists, if you can recognize the state, the, the immorality and the violence behind that, and that it contradicts your moral values to begin with, then let's turn away from that to begin with, right? Let's turn to our community that already shares these non-violent values, and let's turn to that. Right? So, I mean, with the government that we have in place right now, how would we go about doing that? Though? Right. Because everything's so based off of the government yeah. that it's it be basically impossible to do that, uh, which obviously you're trying to change right. somehow. So, what, what would your first step be? All right. So the first step is first you recognize again what the matrix looks like and what it is uh, objectively, right? Uh, and then so you, you let go of the idea that politics will set us free. Let go of the idea that voting will set us free. You know. So what if they legalize cannabis tomorrow? How long did that take? 75 years is not a measure of success to gain one scrap of our freedom, but to have lost so many others in the same amount of time. All right, so then you, you realize the change doesn't start in the White House in DC. It doesn't start in countries we've never been to. It starts with ourselves at home and within our own community. Right? And for me, it starts here in Richmond. Uh, and then after that, you, you start in your own interpersonal relationships, right? Uh, to have these discussions, to talk about this stuff, to, to let go of the legitimacy, because that's all they are. The strangers that you've never met, who politicians who force their opinions onto you. They can tell you what you can and cannot do with your own body, but you can't tell them, right? So it's like a one-way relationship. And then eventually when you build up enough momentum uh, for, for a paradigm shift, all you need is a few thousand anarchists. All you need is a, a few thousand volunteers, a few thousand people um, ready to push for, for that change. Uh, for example, like in Detroit last year, 47% of all homeowners just stopped paying their property taxes. This stopped. Uh, because Detroit went to bankruptcy, they can't really enforce their monopoly on law, uh, and people just stopped paying, right? But they did that on their own cognition. So we have several thousand people here back, backing each other up. Then finally we can say, okay, enough is enough. We're done paying taxes. We can unite on, on this level, protect each other's homes from being extorted, from being evicted. Um, like for example, like there's this guy in DC, he didn't pay $156 in property taxes, paid off his house in full, retired. Uh, because he didn't pay $156, the, the city government of DC put a lien on his house, foreclosed it, and threw him in the street. All right. So that goes to say you don't even own your own house. <laughs> right? You don't even own the land that, that you, 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 you live in. Um, so that's that's pretty much the measure and change in effect. I'm pretty much re-advocating here. It's, it's a non-violent, non I guess, uh, evolution, you know, revolution to a philosophical kind of sense to kind of move forward um, peacefully together as a transition to a free and voluntary society. Oh. 
because all this information is everything the government doesn't want to hear about. Yeah. Right? Well, I mean, I get it all, and these are thoughts I've had myself. Yeah. Um, it just seems like the difficult part is actually doing it. Yeah. Because, like, that's what you're trying to do, and I, if it works out, that's cool. But, like, we've been trying to get, like, a third party in the voting system for so long, and it never works out. I mean, it's the voting system, like you said, is yeah. not already the voting system. There's a problem. Uh, it's part of the government. And, I mean, it's just how are you, it's, how is this all going to happen? I mean, you're going to have to get a lot of support. Yeah, it's yeah. A lot of, yeah, it's going to start. Work. Yeah, well, it, well, it does, uh, does take some time. Um, but at the same time, you just recognize that you can't do it through voting, right? And pretty much every single uh, attempt in the past has been trying to do that politically, right? Yeah. Uh, and the size of government has only continued to increase. <laughs> uh, you know, so that's that's the first thing you have to understand and acknowledge and, and look at the, the evidence. It's just never shrunk. It's never been limited in size. Um, third parties never work. You know, so let's not invest the next 20, 30, 40 years of our life trying to do something that has never worked and instead turn that energy and, and, and community um, investment towards, towards each other. Yeah. Right? I'll so, say uh, like uh, so many people yeah. are advocating for this um, and it starts getting so bad, I mean, the government's going to panic. They're going to try and stay uh, in government like yeah, 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 they yeah. can. They're probably going to enact something like Marshall's Law or some crazy right. stuff. Like, how do you get through all that? All right, so... Uh, that's a, that's a good question. Okay, so they're going to try to declare martial law. I mean, they didn't really declare martial law in Detroit because it becomes unsustainable. And that's something to understand. That the government also has a monopoly on currency, which is why it's lost over 97% of its value. Uh, they have a lot of unfunded liabilities, which is why Detroit collapsed. Um, inevitably, that's going to reach Richmond. It's already reached several cities in California. It's already reached many countries in Europe. Uh, because you have a monopoly on anything, the cost continues to rise and the quality continues to depreciate. Uh, so eventually it gets to the point where they don't really have much of authority anymore because it becomes unfinded, people get fired and let go. Um, and in the event, even if they do declare martial law, eh, so what? You know, this is a movement that can take, take place anywhere, right? Uh, at, at a cafe, uh, on a sidewalk, at your home, uh, at a nightclub, you know, they can never just stop us from just simply talking to one another, right? They can stop us if we advocate for violence, right? That's what they want us to do, right? That's what the National Defense Authorization Act is all about, to arbitrarily label protests as terrorists, right? And they know how to handle violence best. They have all the weapons, they have all the hundreds of thousand people ready to train without hesitation to pull the trigger, right? Look at all the... Yeah, look, look at all the dogs that get shot all, all you know every other week by by uh, by the security, the monopolized security the government has. Um, so they can't stop us from just simply talking to one another. They go out in the streets like, well, where are they? <laughs> we're, we're having a good time. We're, we're talking to each other. We're, we're recruiting. We're, we're growing. Um, they can't even find us. And then of course you'll maybe they have a provocateur, for example, who says, well, let's blow up that bridge. Like, look. Now, uh, go join your local political party. You know, this is a non-violent moving, and it occupies that way. You know, um, this is a non So that safeguards provocateurs. That safeguards and prevents us from being uh, over, you know, taken by, like, people who want to initiate violence. The government knows how to do that best. You know, go join the government, right? Um, so even if they declare martial law, there's, there's nobody to arrest, right? And so as this continues to grow, the politicians will eventually be ostracized. Eventually, business, because then they'll un understand that these are voluntary interactions. You know, the, eventually they won't be invited anywhere. You know, their bars will not invite you, diners won't invite you, you know. Your friends won't even talk to you. Every friend on your Facebook will unfriend you. You know, you want to continue pushing and forcing your ideas onto other people through government. Um, and eventually, you know, your AT&T service provider will pay you $150 to cancel their, you know, subscription plan with you. Uh, so it gets to the point that you can socially ostracize them to the point where it's like, all right, I give up, right? Without even having to lay a finger, without even having to threaten them. Uh, but eventually they'll say, it's, you know, it's time to let go to, right? There's um, an agency in Florida recently. They had this agency uh, since uh, for like 60 years and they realized that this agency really doesn't serve any function uh, in, in Florida. And so they just abolished it. Uh, on their own cognition, they just abolished this, this agency. I think it's like the Water Protection Act or something like that, or Helping Farmers or something like that. And they realized that this hasn't really done anything, hasn't really gone anywhere. Um, so why don't we just abolish it because it doesn't really serve any function. It was in place like during the New Deal and stuff like that. So things that we just don't need today, but on their own, they abolished it, right? So you can get to the point where they can abolish themselves from that position, right? Uh, and that's that's all you really need to do without even having to threaten them. Just ignore them as you would any uh, would-be psychopath, right? Um, but then, uh, but, but then I guess that's that's how you get to a free and voluntary society, and it starts with um, with how we conduct ourselves, right? We don't use violence to solve personal problems, so let's let's start there, All right? Let's turn to your community. Let's use our real voice, and our voice is not a piece of paper. It's not a chat. It's not a lever. The government's afraid to be actually use a real voice. We find out we share these fundamental values for, for nonviolence, for freedom, for equality, and then we find out that we can solve our problems as a community, and we never needed government to begin with, right? 
And from there, you'll have rich, diverse communities of preferences. From there, you can have an apartment complex building that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not, right? Uh, and that's what you'll have, a free market competition trying to provide and cater to your service. Kind of like when you go to a food court at the mall, the most aggressive way they ever at you is like, look, try this free sample, right? Uh, you know, discount over here, join this membership, you know, voluntary, right? Not, not even cohesiveness. But government's nothing but a cohesive relationship. You never gave consent, you never agreed to it. Uh, it's like social security, right? You never, you never sign that. <laughs> you never say, oh, yeah, I want social security, you, but generations before you um, forced that onto you before you were born, right? You have to pay for it and you'll never even have that when it's time to retire. So how do government finance facilities continue to work, like school right. and uh, medical research and all sorts of stuff like that? Okay, okay. All right, so, so uh, a lot of the stuff that government has, they steal from you, and a lot of the stuff they outsource it to businesses to begin with, like roads. Government doesn't build roads. They outsource that, the money they steal from you to taxes, to the politically connected business, to, uh, to the lowest competitor, to the lowest bidder, which is why it's like driving on the moon around here. Right, so you really don't get to choose who provides you the roads. Right, you don't have a choice in the matter or the freedom of economic decision to decide who's going to best provide you that service. Um, so you realize a lot of the stuff the government does, businesses and people do it already. Uh, but they just pretty much take your money like uh, like the mafia and just outsource it to somewhere else. Um, another, I guess, like research and development. Government uh, doesn't really do a lot of research and development. Th those are businesses like Raytheon, Northman Grown Up, uh, Apple. <laughs> it, it's, it's private businesses that does the research and development. And, but they spend so much of their own money trying to lobby government to prevent them being taxed, right? It's like hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, of course, all that money could be reinvested back into more research and development. Like, not so much that if you were given like half of your income back returned to you, right? You, you, you have a lot more choices with what to do with your own money, right? Um, um, this new report that just came out on Reason.com that said that you're 75% poorer because of all the market restrictions on, on voluntary trading, right? There, this is not a free market, it's a state controlled market, completely different. And so someone in a medium income family making around fifty to $57,000 should be making today around two hundred to uh, $300,000, right? But because of all these restrictions on trade, the, the cost and stuff like that goes up. The regulations, the having to, to cover the insurance, have to pay the overhead costs. Um, and that, that prevents like the employer from hiring a new employee or like giving a promotional raise. Uh, you look at Hardywood Park Brewery uh, and that uh, like the meal tax, for example. Uh, so they sell beer, right? So they came, they went to the city council uh, last year and said, hey, you sure we don't have to pay taxes? It's, it's, not, a, it's not a meal, it's beer. And so yeah, yeah, everything's fine. You're in, you're in the good, uh, you're in the clear. And so just recently, uh, the city council came out there and said, listen, actually, you're gonna have to pay back taxes for the past year. And like, what? We just said it was okay. <laughs> we said it was perfectly fine. That beer is not a meal. I don't, we don't have to pay meal taxes. So they have to retroactively pay them now. Uh, and so the owner, yeah. Yeah, the owner said this is going to cost in the tens of thousands, and that could have been the salary of a new employee. Good luck with this. Right? So it's interesting then. So government steals from you to fund their job of stealing. Right? But say, um, say you're a medical researcher you're looking up the cure for cancer, sure. trying to figure out the cure for cancer. Um, you were getting funded by the government. <laughs> that was your paycheck. That's how you bought all the materials in the lab. Yeah. Um, if the government's gone, how would that happen? Well, there's, well, the fact that uh, he won't be the only one looking for the cure for cancer, right? So he will just join a, a private business actually looking for cancer. There'll still be philanthropists, there'll still be people, be a lot more charity, especially when you have half your income, you know, given back to you. You have a lot of economic choice. There'll still be uh, Kickstarter campaigns, right? There'll still be a lot of voluntary ways to, to crowdsource uh, a lot of the funding for this sort of stuff. But at least now it's in a way that you can control where that's going to, you know, not some kind of superfluous research that you have no control over what government does on that, in that particular matter. They just tell you that's where the money is going to. But you really don't have a choice in that matter. The medical research is being restricted right now because the government will let you research like stem cells. Right. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of restrictions in the creativity and the exploration of a lot of science. Probably could have solved cancer by now. Yeah. <laughs> so like intellectual property rights wouldn't exist either in a free and voluntary society. It's not a scarce resource. It's just, this is just an idea. So, but because uh, government has created this in the first place, has allowed, of course, as a business like Apple, didn't want to get into in the patent uh, lawsuits or anything like that. But because other businesses were patenting technology, Apple did. They were they were being sued. So it's like, well, we don't want to get sued. So let's just start patenting everything, and eventually, like, no one can create a phone that has round corners. Uh, and that's because of government, because now you can sue them through government. So without a government, no intellectual property rights, yes. um, it goes back to the way it used to be. There's no corporation either. You know, all a corporation is, is a piece of paper back and forth by government that allows the CEOs to escape personal liability, right? It's a sock puppet that takes the blame. And the way they push off the cost is by lowering employee salaries, 
by increasing consumer prices. Right? So without government, no corporations, it goes back to the way it used to be where we're held personal liable for our own actions. Right? We have personal responsibility at that point, right? To, to take precarious needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um how do you prevent like let's say even you can privatize security. Yeah. Like police forces. Yeah. You have one town. But eventually you're gonna have competition yeah. to prevent those but how do you prevent A monopolies and B's and B like several power companies having all their different power lines going into the same city. That would be right. complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, that's a great question. Okay, so um, you look at Dominion, for example. But they, they, they have contracts with the government of Virginia. Uh, so that's how, that's how they were able to grant that monopoly, of course, right? And like anybody like who's trying to uh, go on a political platform that says, I'm against Dominion Power, Dominion Power will fund your opposition. So you never really have much choices out, outside of them, right? Uh, and that's what Dominion Power wants. They don't want anyone to challenge them. Well, they'll fund your opposition and you'll never win, right? Uh, so you can look at security as a great example. You'll have uh, competing agencies to provide your security, right? You have uh, to, to protect it, but at the same time, for, for the most part, you really don't have to pay a lot of this stuff. I mean, you go to a mall, you don't pay for security, right? That's uh, that's a given. That's something they want to create to provide a good safety um, comfort for you to, to to enjoy your time at the mall. You go to a bar, nightclubs. There's a bouncer there, right? And those 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 uh, that private property, those nightclubs have their own rules, right? You're like, oh, I agree to the rule, or you don't, and you can go to another nightclub, or you can have the freedom to compete. So. Uh, the monopoly issue is that uh, now you have a free market, uh, anyone can compete. There's no restriction, right? A, a corporation can't lobby against you to pass, uh, you know, laws in their favor that go against you because there's no government to bribe anyone. Stay visible, man. Will be totally ubiquitous. Yeah. And I, well, that'd be great if like ADT got their own cops and they got a reputation for shooting the robber on site, and then any robber with ADT sound be like, I can't go in there. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah That's so, how it would work. Yeah, it would work just like that. Like, you go to a golf course community, homeowners associate, they even provide security there, right? Disney World provides security. You just have uh, like eBay it also has uh, their private dispute resolution organization, right? And even eBay, without government, without a monopoly on justice, they have a great user rating system that it regulates itself. A business has like bad ratings, bad uh, bad comments. Obviously, it looks like a business you don't want to do, you know, interact with, right? So bad businesses get nationally ostracized, right? Uh, so like if you provide a bad service, doesn't come on time, broken product, uh, misrepresentation, and then I'll just rate you down, and then it's a voluntary interaction. It's like, look, sorry, you're too much of a risk for me to want to deal with. I'm going to go with someone else. So someone who provides security, look, we've been doing this for 10 years, never had an incident, never threw anyone to a cage for a victimless crime. You know, that gives me a good sense of security. There'll still be consumer reports, there'll still be businesses do accreditations. Um, and that's that's pretty much how it works. Uh, but at least uh, it'll be the kind of security where you, you're in charge. So the moment like a type of security does something bad, all the other businesses are going to be like, look what they did. <laughs> Go with us instead. We'll give you a guarantee. A million bucks if you can find like an extra arsenal in our and like a bullet in our arsenal or something like that right uh so don't don't throw out guarantees like a lot of businesses do uh and so the first one to do something bad they go bankrupt like, uh, like netflix last year try to raise their prices overnight and the people are like oh yeah fuck that cancel on subscribe go to hulu right because now you have the freedom of economic choice you have different selections but when government monopolizes these services like what they're doing right now they hold it at hostage from right and like and you don't have the freedom to choose because they already monopolize that service like uh, for me so what if like mcdonald you know uh is putting themselves at hostage there's burger king there's wendy's there's uh, cookouts right you have different choices still but when government monopolizes the service like going to the park <laughs> for example right you, you, you can't enjoy that right you, you can't go out there because they've monopolized that they've, they've monopolized i guess recreation um, and that's that's the problem with government. You don't have choices. From them. You don't even have the freedom to compete against their monopoly. So that limits innovation. Too. Yes. Uh, if you have a monopoly, there's no need to uh, to innovate. There's no. There, you have no competitors. So they need to make a better system since they're just doing what's cheapest for them right now. They're just using it to, but if you have another company, yeah. They say we have a let's say wireless induction to transfer electricity. I don't know. That'd be so much better. Right. Yeah. And then so is, is, is your like platform like total no government at all yes uh so I'm, I'm an anarchist even by definition like in science anions and cations and means without archi means rulers like monarchy means one political ruler anarchy means without political rulers we can still have rules but then that's another thing government has monopolized they've also monopolized law so it doesn't allow polycentric legal systems doesn't allow rich diverse communities with different preferences and different rules um that caters to to your lifestyle to your needs um so i'm a free market anarchist i guess to 
put it more specific no. next week. Yeah. So, in the, another example, like in the case that there's a serial killer, yeah. how would an anarchist society handle that? Okay, alright, uh, so let's uh, begin backtracking for a second. You, Before you move into a community, you agree to the rules of that, right? You, you don't like magic up here in a golf course community. Uh, you say, look at this contract, I like the rules, I like the consequences, and I agree to that, then I move into this community. Right? So you already agreed to the consequences, what would happen if you were to murder someone. Right? And the consequences could be anything. It could be you pay direct restitution to, to the victim if you're caught, if you're found guilty. Uh, it, would, it could be uh, a pillow fight. It could be uh, a Thunderdome kind of style, you know, like in Mad Max. Uh, it could be whatever you agree to. And that's the important part. Now you have real contracts, real agreements, real consent. Right? And you don't have consent with government. You don't agree on it. You didn't, you didn't uh, you know, give your voluntary agreement or consent to look at, at any of this stuff. You know, a social contract is not a real contract. Yeah, you get arrested for defending yourself. So yes, yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. So say like uh, someone that's not part of the right. community, they live in the forest or something. Yeah, they live in the forest. Yeah. Sneak, uh, multiple communities. All right, so if they want to sneak in and then, uh, all right, so someone's trying to sneak in, it's like, well, then that security has failed me and uh, that's a negative mark on their behalf and someone will also say, hey, I'll provide you better security. Um, you know, I'll, I'll pay the cost for what that uh, serial killer did to your family. Um, you know, take our security instead. Right? I mean, you find businesses so do that all the time. You, serial killer. Uh, uh, I mean, like. Right, so, so you could be given several options. Obviously, uh, the restitution would be uh, whatever the, the family decides. I mean, right? like, I mean, say he's not caught, will, there, will the community search for him? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. If he's caught, uh, say two, two communities. Two communities catch them. Yeah. Um, like their intra community um, deals, laws. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, so. yeah. Communities will have a lot of agreements with one another. Like AT&T has like uh, agreements with Sprint. Sometimes they're not able to cover uh, specific geographic regions, so they have partnership relationship with their competing businesses. So competing security co companies will have agreements that you know, hey, in the event this happened, will you help me out? You know, yeah. In the event this happens to us, will you help us out too? So you'll have communities helping each other. You'll still have, uh, you know, the internet, things to, to communicate and be on the lookout for. Um, and that's, yeah, and that's, that's kind of important. So, I mean, anarchy is not a guarantee that something bad is not going to happen to you, but government is a guarantee that something bad will happen to you. The NSA can't even catch people. Right, yeah. <laughs> and all they do is they put people behind bars to try to release information that we fund. Right. Which is yeah. ridiculous. That is, yeah. The, the, so the government can't do it anyways. Like, it would be all more efficient. Right. Yeah, the, the NSA director just came out that uh, he, he lied that the last, he said like, we thwarted 54 terrorist attempts. This came out this last week that actually that's not accurate. They didn't really attempt, uh, thwart anything. So you won't have any of that stuff, right? But of course, that's the only agency. They can't go bankrupt, right? <laughs> and, that's, and that's the problem. Like, so what if you get rid of a crooked cop? You just replace him. I don't like that agency to go bankrupt, right? Like, uh, like the monopoly and security, right? So, well, we busted this guy because he did oh, something bad to, uh, yeah, to a citizen. You know, it's like, all right, great. I'd rather you go bankrupt. You know, if Wendy's employees slap the customers, you know, they get sued and they go bankrupt, right? Uh, or they lose a lot of money, or uh, you, you can go to another service still. You can go, again, all their competing services to provide you a better experience. Um, but you don't have that with uh, the monopoly service of government. They can't even go bankrupt. And still, they still force you to pay for their salaries. Um, like even the judge, right? Who can hold you at contempt for whatever reason. If he doesn't like the clothes you're wearing, if he doesn't, if you don't stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, if it's just whatever his whims are. But you're paying his salary, right? For, for this arbitrary to, to decide something that's fair. It sort of worked that way. You're paying him, he's providing you a service, right? You're the one who's in charge. What it gets me the most is that people looking at porn, sometimes like hackers would come to the store, it's what we perceive illegal images. Yeah. You know, whatever you want to say, uh, child. Porn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I just and then they'll get busted, and then they have to go around saying they're a sex offender for the rest of their life after their time in prison, and they didn't even do anything. Like, yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, I remember reading the news a couple years ago, like the Pentagon, there's, they found like a, there's like a lot of pornography, child pornography running around in the Pentagon. But of course that's something that hopefully like everybody forgets about, you know, there's nobody prosecuting that or looking into that. Um, there was a news report release that came out that there was a lot of uh, child porn running around in the Pentagon. But of course, you know, they're the ones, it's the government that's making up all the rules, so they're the ones who can selectively enforce it if they want to. Yeah. And they also have immunity from their own rules, yeah. right? In, in my, um, about the law, yeah. <laughs> my, their laws. Yeah. In my yeah. middle school, though, there was um, a bunch of students. There's, there was something called the IB program in my middle, my middle school, yeah. and it was the smart kids and stuff. Uh, I was going to do it, but I, I didn't do it. 
But um, a lot of the IB students, like 60% of them, uh, ended up getting expelled because they were in the clique and they were all sending sex to each other. And they not only got expelled from school, but they uh, most of them have on the record permanently that they are sex offenders. And they, these were like 14, 15 year olds who were just sexting and yeah, it's dumb. Yeah. But they have a record as a sex offender for the rest of their lives. And this was like several kids. And it, I mean, these were kids that were obviously smart. They're in the IB program. They yeah. obviously had a bright future. Um, they just made one mistake. I mean, I hate how the government like sometimes it helps you and sometimes it just completely screws you over. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's that's the worst part of it. You don't even have a choice on the kind of justice that you want, right? Even though you're forced to pay for it. I mean, there's that uh, this, this that sad story that came out recently about this this uh, young student at a local high school who streaked at a football game. I was having fun, doing old time tradition, just streaked across the football game. Uh, I think it was just wearing his, uh, his underwear though. But uh, because he streaked, they labeled him a uh, potential sex offender. Uh, the school was like, we're going to uh, go to court with you, we're going to expel you. Um, just humiliated the kid and it made him scared for his life. And then uh, a few days later, he just committed suicide. Um, and that's, that's government justice. And that's, that's how they, they take your life, that's how they bully you. Um, and that's a. Uh, Pretty much why you kind of have to stand up against that, stand up against that kind of tyranny. The problem with, um, I think, feel like this movie gave me is that a lot of the smart people that can back it up and that can like actually put reason behind it, that get, get rid of the fear that the government is spreading around about this mm -hmm. form of government. So the government will squash it before it gets too big. And I, feel, yeah. and I wouldn't put it past them to be like, well, we're just speaking, we're not doing anything yeah. violent, and they'd be like, going to sweep this under the rug, don't you worry about it. Right, 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 right. Because they're totally in their own self -interest. They are, they are. I don't yeah. know how, like, I feel like I'm taking a risk or I feel like I'm betraying someone <laughs> right now. Right, yeah. That's to say something, right? That in and of itself, that you're afraid of that social ostracism from the state. Right, you shouldn't have to be afraid. You shouldn't have to be scared. Ruin my life. Right? Because they, they could, they, they could implant child pornography. Sure. Exactly. Like, I didn't even get a dorm. I live off campus because I'm afraid my roommate might smoke weed and they might, you know, I might get kicked out of college because right. my roommate has some weed or something like that. I mean, that's I'm paying extra money just because I'm afraid of the dumb policies that are. Yeah, yeah most of the crimes that they first here at the at the dorms I was reading at the Commonwealth Times is just victimless crimes. Uh, it, it's funny. So you have the maturity to come out and live on your own, but not the maturity to know what to do with your own body. Exactly. I don't think there should be such things as a victimless crime. There's no yeah. victim. There's, yeah. I mean, my, my view is, is very radical and people don't seem to agree with it, but um, <clears throat> as far as yeah. drugs go, I, I don't think any drug should be, be illegal. I think maybe the process, I mean, maybe um, selling it or producing it should definitely be uh, illegal or regulated at least. But um, if you want to go out and smoke pot, if you want to even do crack or heroin, that's fine. That's your body. The moment that you, um, are, when you're cracked up, you go out and you kill someone, that's when it becomes a problem. Um, or you start like being naked and running around or whatever sure. you do. That's when it becomes a problem. But if, if, you're, if, if you want to do that to your body, that's your own choice. Um, and they've actually, uh, I think it was in Holland or the Netherlands somewhere, um, they actually did that. All, all drugs were legal. Um, and the rates stayed about the same uh, as in America um, for transfer of hard drugs to, um, from marijuana to hard drugs. Sure. I mean, the, the ratios were about the same, so it shows the government really doesn't do much. Right. I mean, the, the ratios were about the same. Um, so that I mean, shows that if you're going to do it, you're going to do it. If you're not, you're not. The government's not really going to have too much to say. Right. And it's actually there's less of a hardcore drug use there. It's more um, it, it's more of like marijuana and stuff because there's less um, transfer because there's no middleman. You don't have to go to the black market to yeah, get yeah. something like weed. Um, and you're not introduced to the crack. I mean, you don't have to go to a crack dealer to find weed. Yeah, I mean. yeah. So I mean, it's like. All sorts of stuff. I mean, it's just so messed up. Yeah, uh, Portugal decriminalized all their drugs um, 10 years ago. Even better than uh, in Switzerland or Sweden. or Yeah. Uh, they decriminalized it 10 years ago. They're the first ones to do that. All of them, from heroin, cocaine, marijuana, everything. Uh, and what they found that these people needed help, you know, not cages. But the yeah. first few years alone, drug uses dropped dramatically. Uh, the diseases with sardidos dropped. There are more cocaine users here, rate right per people, uh, in the U.S. versus uh, cannabis users in Portugal. 
So you'll find that these even improve better when government just get out yeah. of the equation altogether. Yeah. I have a guy that lived in Holland where they legalized weed and um, I used to live in Europe. That's another interesting story. But um, like I, I talked to him the other day this summer and I said, oh, he's taking like the equivalent of AP classes there. Yeah. He's taking eight at the same time and he has all A's. Yeah. And I'm like, you're going to whatever college you want to. He's like, essentially, I said, what do you do? He's like, I smoke weed every day. And I'm like, like that's what he does, and he doesn't right. get in trouble for it, and he's doing fine. Yeah. And then my friends, they told me, they said, it's sad with you Americans, I said, and they said, because you guys don't know how corrupt or corrupt you guys are. You guys are just as bad as North Korea in our eyes. Yeah. You are that brainwashed. And I said, that's not true. They said, that's your brainwash talk. Like, and it's true. I, I've tried telling this to other people, and I'm sure people walk around looking at us like a uh, crazy anarchist. <laughs> because they've been conditioned to yeah. think that way. Yeah. They don't think themselves like Right, and that's uh, that's the problem with like uh, the public indoctrination schools. Um, that's what they they teach. They want you to uh, you know the only options is either make something legal or illegal, uh, or like you look at uh, bills for example. Either you want to have a lower penalty or a higher penalty. It's like look, how long we just remove government from the equation altogether? You can look at things even improve even with traffic. Different places in Europe. They remove all out of all their traffic lights, the traffic stop signs, and traffic improved. Traffic congestion went down. Traffic accidents went down. Uh, because I think it becomes a more of a shared road experience. You're not paying attention to lights. You're paying attention to your community, right? And things improved. Things went faster. It's really crazy, right? And that's pretty much an example of how everything improves, pretty much, especially with drugs, with traffic. When you just remove government from trying to control our lives altogether, there's spontaneous order. There's, we're, we're human beings. We can figure stuff out naturally. Um, and Probably start renewable energy too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Being a few places to become more beautiful to attract more people to those areas to make the most money. Yeah, and, and that's that's what I want. Uh, I don't subscribe to utopia. It for me, it sounds like another idleness or stagnation. I want there to be problems, but in a free market way, we can continue to upgrade and continue to improve upon those problems, right? You can't improve upon government. Uh, they're, they're good at what they do, and that's pretty much just increasing your taxes and uh, hurting people. That's that's all they do. Um, and that's, uh, that's, that's all you have with government. Uh, and so for me, it's like, you know, the, the political process just takes so long to change anything. And again, I was just mentioned, like, so what if they legalize cannabis tomorrow? 75 years is not a measure of success. Sorry, to, to finally gain one scrap of our freedom, but to have lost so many others in the same amount of time. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna be holding the sign as an old man in my 80s still begging to be free if that's the case. Um, I, want, I want real freedom in my lifetime. I want my children not to be born with social security prison tattoo numbers on their feet. Uh, so, I, so that's pretty much why I'm out here. Just, we can turn to our community. We can solve these problems non-violently in the same manner that we don't use violence in our lives, right? So let's turn away from government that only knows how to use, solve problems to violence and, and turn to our community. Right? Even talking to each other, we, we find out we, we share these fundamental values against violence, right? And that's, that's how we start. Use our real voice. You know, it's not a piece of paper. It's not a chat. It's not a lever. Um, and that's another part of the indoctrination. Government doesn't want you to talk to each other. They want you to go into a secret booth and convince their sins every four years, pretty much. Um, but like you were mentioning earlier, though, that because this is a non-violent political, non, non-political and non-violent movement, they can't really touch us. They can't really do anything. Like all this information is the antithesis of government. So the moment that this information gets out, the the jig is up. Everybody understands the true relationship that they now have with government. That you're nothing but a tax slave, and they're nothing but political rulers. That the only way they continue to exist is to keep hiding the relationship. And that's why they call it a war on drugs, and they don't call it objectively a war on people. Right? They'll say it's wrong for you to steal, but they'll hide it and call it taxes. Right? It's wrong for you to murder, and then they'll hide it and call it organized war. Right? So they hide the relations, they hide the true nature of what's going on. So the moment they, they find out what we're doing, it's like, oh shit, we don't want anyone to know, so we're, not, we're just going to leave them alone. Right? Uh, they're going to wait until we do something violent, but it's a non-violent movement, so they'll be waiting forever. Uh, you know, until the day comes when we're finally united, we can kind of push this forward, forward together and have a peaceful transition, finally, to a free and voluntary society. Uh, and that's, that's the best way to go about it. You know, no one has to get hurt, no one needs to be arrested. I mean, we're already in a cage, a tax front to begin with, right? Uh, there's no need for, you know, self-mortar. Um, we're already suffering enough to begin with. So, and that's the last thing that government can stop, is us simply talking to each other. Uh, I had a cop here try to stop me, actually, here, VCU cop, uh, a couple of days ago last week. And uh, he had eventually had to give up. So, eventually they're trying to say, like, you have freedom of speech in this circle, you don't have freedom of speech outside of it. If you want freedom of speech outside the circle, you have to beg for permission from the strangers at VCU uh, ahead of time to have permission to just talk to each other. Right? It's not too easy to talk uh, Based on what the cop was telling me, based on what the uh, VCU official was telling me, uh, and that's, that's what they told me. 
And then, so of course we had a little uh, standoff here and then eventually comes to the point where he just leaves me alone. Right? And that's, I'm not, I'm not hurting anybody, I'm not causing destruction, not causing a, a, a distraction either. Right? I'm not in the way of any people walking. It's a ridiculous policy. Right? It really is. Yeah. With you on that. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, that's, and that's what I mean. But I haven't, I'm not going to beg for permission, right? But, and they can't stop me. They can't stop us from just simply talking with one another. Why are you recording? I don't mind. I just want oh, uh, so I record this stuff. So it eventually comes to the point where people that say, well, how are you going to convince other people? How are the people going to see that we can be responsible for our own lives? So for the most part, we're all good. For the most part, we don't use violence to solve problems. And so I record this for like a project online on YouTube to show people, look, here's 100 people who agree that government's immoral. Right? You're waiting to see if there's other people who agree. Here, here's like, here's a thousand people who agree. Here's a lot more people in your own community in Richmond who agree that violence is not a way to solve problems. A hundred people, a thousand people that agree that government is not the way to solve problems. Right? You're not alone. Right? And, and, and the stand against that tyranny. Um, and that's, that's why I record these, record the conversations and to continue the discussion. What's your YouTube channel? Uh, it's under my name, Cal Moloney. Uh, but you'll find all the information on the uh, pamphlets here. It's, uh, so the organization is called Liberate RBA. It's a non-political organization. And, and that, of course, the same thing is also in, involves peaceful parenting. Because uh, you have to universalize the principle. No, you I can't just be against state violence, right? You have to be against all of it. Um, otherwise, it's a preference. That the violence is done to you is okay, but to her, it's not, right? Universalize the principle that to also include children. Uh, and that, you know, spanking children only teaches them that violence is a way to solve problems when they grow up. You know, so right away, we help stem the... Um, the cause of serial killers, <laughs> right? A lot of them coming up from troubled homes, a lot of them coming up from abusive upbringings. Um, and spanking, for, for example, knocks off a key points. So right away it knocks off uh, the ability to rationalize uh, because your brain is still developing until the age of four. So this has to be a traumatic experience for the child uh, to, to experience to have a lot of problems in their adulthood. It leads to criminality, addictions. Um, so a, a lot of the negative stuff that we look and associate with and that's the cause of all that is violence. Cool. It was good talking to you. Yeah, you I too. My name going. is Cal. Yeah, I'm John. John, John Clark. Pleasure to meet you, John. You are? Chris. Chris, pleasure to meet you, Chris. Do you have any other questions? Transition. Transition. Um, Between, because yeah, yeah, yeah. they use anarchy, and that's become synonymous with um, everyone running around, shooting each other, stealing things out of stores. And I imagine if the government just stopped, that would happen until those private businesses could go in and put things back right. in order. But how would you transition? All right, that? so that's a great point. So not only does government hold these services hostage, but when, the, when they abdicate and, and disappear and stop, you have not let us enough time to build up those services and provide it, right? Um, so this is an interesting transition. There's also, you can look at Detroit, for example. They filed for bankruptcy recently, and this pretty much is going to happen to every city. Uh, Sacramento is next. Uh, Philadelphia also has a lot of unfunded liabilities. Eventually, it's going to be here in Richmond. But you look at the monopoly of, on security they have in Detroit, it takes over an hour for the police to respond, right? But already, there's a private security company over there. There's this guy who created his own security company providing protection for these neighborhoods, and they're voluntarily paying for the service. And he's not throwing anyone into a cage for victimless crime. And crime rates already dropped dramatically in those areas. Uh, so when, when it gets to that point, and when we, we talk a lot about this, you help um, not just like liberate the minds, but encourage people to be entrepreneurs, encourage people to, to solve those problems and meet those needs that we want. So during that transition, we're already um, creating a lot of these services that we're going to want already to begin with outside of government. It's going to take, it's going to take a lot of people to make yeah. such a radical change. Yeah, I know they've already doing, they're already doing some marches in D.C. Yeah. I was talking to my granddad. Oh, like. Patriot in the sense of what the law is supposed to do, not right. what it's doing. Right, right, right. So he says, you better believe that if people are willing to do this right now, peace will take their money and time out of their day to go on this march. That's a prelude to something yeah. much bigger. And I know every big imperialistic society like the U.S. is going to collapse, like Rome, yeah. and like all this. And eventually, you know, <laughs> the next 100, probably the next 100 years, I believe. Oh, people give it close to like 5, 15 years. Uh, really? Yeah. Well, so they also have a, the reason why is uh, currency. They have a monopoly in currency, so it's lost over 97 percent of its value. It's got three percent left to go. So, but they're going to drag it out as long as they can. Uh, but you know, like they're not solving anything. This yeah. Right. Nothing. We're still a bitch in China. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, and the one other question. Yeah. Um, I can understand. I guess we would have defense agencies, but you would have a hard time. No one would agree in the country on which agency is best to defend on a national scale. Mm -hmm. So, how would you 
defend, let's say, the country. Just another, like, right, right. All right, that's actually a really good question. Okay, so uh, first, uh, when it comes to that point, we realize there's no such thing as countries. No such thing as countries. All a country is is an arbitrary line on a piece of paper, right? It's a geopolitical map of the tax form that we live in. So there'll be no countries. So without one country, you'll have so many different competing uh, dispute resolution organizations. Much in the way you already have today with GEICO, right? Or Allstate. You don't really go to court, they just solve the disputes on their own. You know, you're covered by insurance, and so you don't really have to go to court, right? Your premiums may go up if you're a reckless driver, but you know, it could also go down if you're a good driver too. So in a way, we'll kind of be insured against one another, against that sort of stuff. Um, but at the same time, we want to protect against China. We're like the first free voluntary society that spreads in this geography graphic region, uh, China's going to have a tough time because it's not going after one country now, it's going after like 300,000 other separate communities that are they're also armed, they're also capable of defending themselves, uh, and so that's, that's a lot to go through. Uh, it's easy enough to try to take over one country, sure, but now you have like uh, hundreds of thousands of communities to try to take over. Um, and at the same time, without government though, there's no tax system. So there's no incentive to take over anything. Like Hitler wanted to take over France as fast as he can to take over the tax system. You take over the tax system, it helps fund your war machine. All right? So there's no taxes, there's really nothing to take over. So you're saying that people will solve their own disputes, you know, because there will be no more governments. Yeah. But that's assuming that everyone moves to anarchy at the same time. Right. What, if, what if we're just the next progressive you know, country and we're the only anarchy? Uh, uh, that's, that's a good question. Uh, so, like, this idea is already kind of permeates boundaries, uh, in that. Uh, so, this is Liberate RBA. It's already spread to other uh, communities across the country. There's one in uh, Missouri, for example, Liberate Oz. There's one in uh, New York, Liberate Rochester. There's one in Australia. That's an anonymous group. Is that a joke or? Anonymous is interesting. Uh, I guess the, the, the ethics are kind of go back and forth, but they're always kind of seeking some kind of justice. Like they see somebody shoot a dog to try to find the perpetrator who did that or who assaulted such and such person. Um, but an anonymity, I guess, is uh, important in the fact that what you kind of face in, in the surveillance world that we live in uh, because of government. Uh, so I guess my, my thoughts on anona, anonymous is that without government, though, there, you won't have any need to be anonymous anymore, right? You no one's going to throw you into a cage for your preference or because of your lifestyle. You'll be living in a community that's used that and, and meets your needs and you no longer have to walk in here or pretend to be someone you're not. If that community didn't like it, then you move to the community that doesn't. Yeah, or, and then you have the freedom now to create one. I mean, most of the land is monopolized by the by the government, so you end the government, you free have so much land to homestead, so much land to privatize. And you'd eventually have, um, I guess, yeah, city-states almost forming, kind of like they had in Italy. Yeah, I guess you, you will kind of have like that. You'll have, uh, like, you'll have rich, diverse communities all around Richmond. And again, you'll have maybe a community that's 420 friendly and one across the street that's not for those who hate cannabis. Great. Uh, we never have to interact. Maybe when we go to exchange that business and stuff like that, you know, when you go to a mall, right? Um, it'll be just kind of like that. You won't, uh, you won't have to see it. You won't have to, uh, you know, feel like uh, it's, it's hurting you or. <laughs> or I have to see that preference being used by someone else, right? You'll be in the kind of community with everyone else who agrees with you. But the more rational people get in these kind of communities, the more tolerant and open people will be. Um, I mean, there'll, there'll still be rules for those communities, but at least there would be consensus by the people who want to live in that community. So the way I see it is um, if we do manage to move to this make an article in Rosemary State, actually, yeah. you gotta, there's two ways I can see it going. One, Perfect. Yeah. Beautiful. Like, yeah. when I'm still crying. Oh my god, it's always it's always gonna be bad. Yeah. You can't help it. But it's all pretty easily pretty quickly. Pretty quickly. The only other situation you see that could be a problem is if uh, uh, city states are more say you have very people of radical views that hate homosexuals. Sure. Black homosexuals over, you know, ten miles away. Yeah. So they go and they raise away and we and like kill all of them. Sure. So all of a sudden you have all these private companies coming together. But this one is very competitive, so it's very well funded, they have better weapons. Sure. They keep to themselves, it's a private business. Yeah. So all of a sudden they have to merge with another um, city state to help fend off this because that's more what they're doing, killing people. Until so eventually you have more people building up until you're at two sides and then yeah. eventually one side again and then you're back where we started with one government. Right, right. Well, if, if that's the worst case scenario, that's pretty much what we have today. Um, so it's not that bad to still fight for freedom. Uh, but even then, uh, you can't have standing armies without taxation.
right? Uh, uh, like Blackwater. Blackwater only exists because of taxation. You know, they're giving government grants and uh, subsidies to, to fund Blackwater. Uh, so you'll have a lot of these paramilitary forces, but they're only backed by taxes. Uh, standing armies can only be brought about with government. So without a government, there's no standing armies. It takes a lot of resources to have that. Um, that not, not one person, not one community can do that. And that's why you have to tax everyone to fund that sort of stuff. Um, and even then, I mean, that, those communities, uh, like LGBT communities, people who are open to everyone else, they'll have their own security too. Uh, and then those uh, security con uh, companies will have contract for other ones. In the event that we're aggressed upon, would you like to join forces, right? Um, and then at the same time, violence is very costly, right? Like if you're going to employ someone in the event that they get hurt, you have to pay, you know, their liability or you have to, you have to pay the cost of uh, insurance that and it's more cost beneficial to actually find an agreement with the other company to come to mutual term agreements. Uh, otherwise, because you're 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 in the business of making a profit, right? And violence is very costly. Um, I mean, you, it's uh, it's unforeseeable <laughs> in the way we're how it exists today. Uh, and they spend like trillions of dollars in, in the military industrial system, right? Uh, and that's and they don't care because it's not their money, right? If it was a real business, like, well, I don't know if we really want to support that. That's very expensive. Um, and of course, you'll have um, so maybe you'll mad at us and then we're going to fight them off. Yeah. No, we're not going to fund that. Yeah. And so it'll like, do it yourself, and then their security business is going to kill all of you. And right. Won't have the problem anymore. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So it's like, look, you want to take it on your own? Go for it and risk your own life. Hey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what you'll have. Uh, and, and like, I mean, you look at it even right now, like at nightclubs, they have competing bouncers, competing nightclubs. Uh, bouncers don't attack other nightclubs. Um, they just enforce the rules. Uh, you can look at like Disney World doesn't go after uh, King's Dominion. Uh, they have their own security, right? It's, it's too expensive, too costly. They'd rather invest that money in Im improving the experience for you. Yeah, I, th I guess we have this government that's back on these Christian ideals to stop telling people what's right and what's wrong. And stop all these, like, I'm I don't yeah. know, yeah. Yeah. Probably won't even be much animosity anymore towards people in general. But yeah. More understanding that you have a problem. Right. Like, you know, you know, like John Lester, or, like you have a problem, not that. It's almost to me like a medieval approach. It's like you're crazy. Let's put a stake in your frontal lobe and wiggle it around. And yeah. Like, like that's what I feel like. It's like you're crazy. We're gonna put you on some medicine, and we're gonna keep you in the psychiatric. Yeah. Well, oh, come a little closer. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's that's the uh, that's what I, you'll, you'll find in that. And, and through government, though, they you don't have the freedom to associate or disassociate, right? So that's that's the big problem to begin with. And then it turns it turns to this great animosity towards these communities because now they realize that through this political power, if they don't compete for it, other communities will, will gain it and then force their preference onto you, right? And for free much, that's what people want. They want the freedom to be left alone, right? Uh, but it becomes a lot of this animosity. Tons of all this aggressiveness towards each other because of that forced uh, preference that's going to happen to them in that geographic area because of political power, right? So that's, that's where a lot of this anger comes from. I mean, there's, no one really knows it works until you try. Right, right, right. And for the most part, we don't use violence to solve problems in our day-to-day -day life, so we're already living in a state of anarchy. Most people don't want to. Maybe, maybe he'll support Yeah, I mean, right now this is kind of... This is anarchy, yeah. I don't see anyone holding a gun, threatening each other, peaceful conversation. I mean, the fact that we prefer to argue or to discuss or talk, so as we have a preference to, to talk, to use a non-violent uh, ways to communicate and solve a problem versus through violence, right? So we have a universal preference for that, right? So for the most part, we're all good. For the most part, we are capable of this. For the most part, it already exists all around us. Um, and what's left is kind of to unite those, those values. It's really open my mind. Yeah, of course, of course. Thank you so much for stopping by, Chris. All right, man. Take good care.